this place where we are meeting only us, the earth is full. Walls and a roof, sheltering people, windows for light and open door. Yet it becomes a body that lives when we are gathered here. And no from afar, stars that are falling, sparks that are sown in us like seed, names for our God, dreams, signs, and wonders sent from the past are all we need. We in this place remember and speak again what we have heard. God's free Accept bread at this table, broken and shared, a living sign. Here in this world, dying and living, we are each other's bread and wine. This is the place where we can receive what we need to increase. Our justice and God's peace. Good morning and welcome to worship. Good Glad that you're here with us. A few announcements for this week. Uh, today is Hope for a Rainy Day. Uh, we have a big donation jar in the back, so if you have any spare change, we invite you to, to share it with us. Um, uh, the women's group is meeting tomorrow at 2. Do you want to say anything about that, Patty, or anybody else? Only like five people to come. Okay. <laughs> if anybody's off in the afternoon, you... Uh, sorry, any women are off in the afternoon, you're most welcome to join. Um, Cub Scouts, we're having our den meeting tomorrow at 6. 3F is still meeting f at 5.30 on Tuesdays, and 406 Church will meet this week at 7. Uh, and next week, we're going to move to Tuesday. So I can participate in golf league. So that's all. <laughs> um, so we'll be having a change coming up. A uh, big announcement I want to make uh, and highlight is uh, our, I'm part of the volunteer chaplaincy at St. Luke Hospital here. And uh, a couple of our chaplains are starting a support group for caregivers. And that's specifically, specifically uh, adult caregivers of other adults. Um, and that's going to start, um, oh, did we get, the, oh yeah, May 6th, Monday, May 6th, and uh, through June 10th in the hospital. It's in the pop room, and that's on the second floor. So if you have more questions, uh, let me know, and uh, there are registration forms on the, the bulletin boards in the narthex and in the hallway. So, um, And anything you want to say, Patty, about the raffle? Okay, wonderful. Uh, more things are always welcome for the raffle, and uh, we've got get tickets from Patty. So, are there other announcements? Yeah. Sherry? I just want to report on Guy. Thank you all for your prayers and Justin Sparks and some encouraging music of late. And he is doing very well. The surgery is long. The doctor said to do it. It's too long to have it done. So the advice is. We're glad that guy has come through it okay through his knee surgery. So, oh, Jeanette. Real flowers are welcome on the altar. All right, thanks, Jen. Uh, Diane. Oh, Phil, how old are you going to be? Name one. Name one? 
Well, how old was Methuselah? Was he like 860? No. <laughs> uh, any other birthdays in the house this week? You know, it's not your birthday. <laughs> Little kidders. All right. All right. Happy birthday to Phil. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Phil. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Oh, Kathy? What day is that? We have, we kind of have a tentative date. Sometime in early May. All right. <laughs> well, we're excited the children's choir gets to perform again in schools to showcase their talent. So it's a lot of work, and many thanks to Kathy for keeping it going. <laughs> you have an announcement for you? Oh, my birthday? Yeah. It's over a month away. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting closer to Methuselah every day. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk about that down the road. <laughs> okay. With that being said, please take a moment and prepare your hearts for worship. I invite you to stand as we join in together in our order for confession and forgiveness found on page 94 towards the front of our hymnals. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue with hymn 617. We come to you for healing, Lord.
guides us through physician skills, through nurses' gifts of care, and through the love of faithful friends who lived our lives in prayer. When nights are long with wakefulness, through days when strength runs low. Grant us your gift of patience, Lord, your calming peace to know. <laughs> Just a uh, uh, unique place in my memory now because uh, uh, during the pandemic, many of you remember, I would pull YouTube videos for a recorded worship, and I couldn't find one for this hymn. So I had to record it myself, and it's very difficult on guitar. So it's forever etched in my brain, but I just love the words of this hymn. So Difficult music. <laughs> uh, we continue our worship with our liturgy on page 165. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the feast a victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, Seen and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all. The people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. For our God, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lamb who was slain has begun his reign, Alleluia. This is the feast 
Christ a victory for our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue with our prayer of the day, which is printed in your celebrate inserts in your bulletins. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and will the children please come forward for the children's sermon. How's it going, guys? All right. You glad for warmer days? No? A little Miss Winter over here. <laughs> Huh? Well, I'm grateful for the sunshine. Okay, good and bad, huh? Well, uh, today we're going to hear about a story of healing a little bit. And uh, so uh, in the story from the book of Acts, uh, Peter and John were going into the temple after Jesus had died and rose again. And uh, there was a guy in the temple there who couldn't walk. From the time he was born, he couldn't walk. That's kind of crazy, huh? And uh, back in that, those days, they didn't have wheelchairs or ramps. You know, like in our church here, we made it so we have a much better ramp a few years ago. Uh, they didn't have anything like that. So he had to be carried everywhere on a mat. Just like had to have friends and people who knew him carry him around all the time. And he would go and beg for money. Uh, but when the disciples showed up, uh, he asked them for money, but they didn't have any. Uh, and instead, they said, by the power of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. You know what happened? He walked. He walked. Whoa. Yeah, right? That's pretty crazy, huh? Pretty miraculous healing. Now, um, so he got up, and not only did he walk around, you know what else he did? What would what, you do next if you couldn't walk your whole life? Say you're like 40 or something young like that. Um, <laughs> um, and you couldn't walk your whole life. And suddenly, miraculously, you could walk. What would you do? Run around the whole earth? That's a good response. Yeah, run over water. Do cartwheels? Yeah. Anything you would do, Charlie? I would jump all the way over the water puddles. That's, that is a good plan. All right. Well, this guy did most of that. He didn't run the whole earth, but he not only did he start walking, he started leaping. He started leaping. And then what he did? Or praising God. And you know what? That's what it's all about. When God heals us, it's all about us coming back to see, um, coming back in love and faithful, worshipful relationship with God. That's what the healing miracle is about. Because that's really what's most important. It's pretty cool to be able to walk when you can't, to be given a miracle like that. The real healing is God healing our hearts. God healed his heart that day. All right, let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for the healing that you show in our lives, and we ask that you uh, bless us with continued healing. Help us to see that you are the source of all goodness and wholeness, and uh, you make the world better through your love. Help us to receive that with thankful hearts, and as we jump for joy, help us to praise you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you guys for coming up. Morning. Good morning. The first reading for today comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. In the background, it says, After healing a man unable to walk, Peter preaches to the people, describing how God's promises to Israel have been fulfilled in Jesus. Through the proclamation of Christ's death and resurrection, God is offering them forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. In the reading, Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and you asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Please join with me in reading responsibly Psalm 4. <laughs> Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful, and the Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second reading for today comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was reve revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins either has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson for this morning comes from Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. 
And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here ends our gospel lesson. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When my older brother asked my sister-in-law to marry him, it did not take them long to decide that they wanted a family friend of hers to be the flower girl. She was a young girl with a great spirit, great smile, and cute as can be. When I met her, it made perfect sense why they chose her for such an esteemed role. Unfortunately, not long after they asked her to be part of the wedding, she received tragic news from the doctor. They found a sizable tumor in her brain that was inoperable. They could not remove it for the strong likelihood of hurting her in other ways. But because they could not remove it, she was given the prognosis that she was not long for this world. She would be dead before the wedding. As you might imagine, the family and many others were devastated. The girl was very young, and her life, as she had a huge deal of life ahead of her, to have her smile diminished seemed like blasphemy, and the thought of her joy being lost to the world was nothing but utter tragedy. Without any other options available, and with the overwhelming, heart-wrenching love of parents for their child, the little girl was saturated in prayer. Everyone who knew her prayed that she be saved from this cancerous growth. And then they prayed some more. And then they prayed some more. On and on they prayed and prayed. And then they prayed some more. What else could they do, really? Prayer was the only treatment left for this young, heartbroken family. And they did not shy away from using it. A little while later, they returned to the doctor and received the most unexpected news. Not only had the tumor shrunk, it had disappeared completely. Though she had only received love, hope, and a mountain of prayer as a treatment, the flower girl to be <clears throat> had a brain that was tumor free. She had been freed from the evil that had been growing between her ears seeking to rob her from life. Doctors were so astounded at this unexplainable situation that they desired to study her brain to figure out how she might have come through this so miraculously. But the family declined. They had made it to that point without the help of doctors. They were not interested in asking for it then. Her smile continued to be wide and bright, her joy surreal and her family intact. And sure enough, she got to carry her bright, beaming smile down the aisle to my brother and sister-in-law's wedding, just like she promised she would do. The Lord works in mysterious ways. In our first lesson for this week, we hear about another healing story and its aftermath. 
In the lead up to the passage, we read in Acts about a man who was unable to walk from the time that he was born. He did not know what it is to run around with other kids, did not know what it is to take a stroll with his first crush, or even know what it is like to go about his daily business on his own. He knew how to live life without, a, without the power of his legs. Actually, it, se- it seems like he did a pretty good job of getting by in spite of his limited abilities. But he had never known what it, is, it, what it was like to walk through life on his own. When we encountered the man in the third chapter of Acts, he was being carried into the temple like he was every day so that he could beg for alms from those entering God's holy house. He was there to live out his day like he lived every day, hoping for and relying on the generosity of strangers. Yet this day was not like every other day. On this day, he asked Peter and John, direct followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, for money, for money to help him get through the day as though they were regular men like any other who passed by that way. Instead of handing him coins, though, they were about to give the man a gift beyond his wildest dreams. When the man who could, who could not walk begged them for alms, Peter responded and said, Look at us. When the man did, Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And Peter reached down, took the hand of the man who had never taken a single step in his whole life. The man stood up by his own power to not only walk, but we read that the man began leaping and praising God. I imagine I would jump for joy if I received a miracle like that too. The man who had never even stood up on his own was jumping up and down like a pogo stick. The the Lord works in mysterious ways indeed. I share these stories to share that the Lord heals. Healing may not come when we want it. As grateful as the family was that their daughter was healed from the tumor, I imagine that they might desire it never have entered her brain in the first place. It is likely that the man who spent years unable to stand up and gallivant around prayed more than once that the Lord restore his legs before the moment the disciples showed up. Yet, these stories still show us to this day that there is healing that transcends what we can expect or explain. When the Lord decides to heal, there is no ailment, no injury, no infection or paralysis that can get in the way. The Lord's healing is sure, certain, and miraculous when it comes. It defies earthly expectation when it arrives and reveals otherworldly truth and power, which is the true goal. And that is where our passage from Acts begins this week, with Peter declaring that this was not their doing at all, but the work of the God of their ancestor Abraham and the work of the risen Jesus. The healing was not about the two disciples having faith powers to do cool things, even though the healing was kind of worthy of a comic book superhero. The healing was about revealing that God worked in and through the man that they had executed and proclaiming that now he had risen from the dead, he was still doing miraculous things in our world. The whole healing scene took place in Jerusalem and at the temple where Jesus caused quite a stir in his last week on earth. Presumably, Presumably, at least some people around Solomon's porch that day remembered the crowd calling for Christ's crucifixion. It is likely 
that some of them joined in shouting the very words, Crucify him! Crucify him! These were the words that caused Pontius Pilate to relent and release Barabbas instead of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, as this man emerged from his mat, they were seeing the power of that same risen Jesus of Nazareth at work. A truly humbling experience. This is what these miraculous healings are all about. Pointing us to higher realities that transcend our human frailty. As we carry our scars through life, contemplate cycles of tragic news every week, and live our lives knowing that some will never be free from their cancer and others will never walk again. Still, still we are shown that there is a God who has risen from the same human condition to bring us to new life. There is no ailment, injury, accident, diagnosis, or anything else that can keep us down forever. God will lead us to rise from the mats that we were carried in on, so that we too may stand up, take a few steps, and then start leaping and praising God with a miraculous joy, unlike anything we have known before. May the Lord work these mysteries in our lives, too. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
understand as we confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 105 in your hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession, which are printed on the back of your Celebrate inserts. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers as we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth, calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate, that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. O oh God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, those facing loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry here in the Mission Valley and the Flathead Reservation. Move us to love our, our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. Amen. Lord, we ask that you receive the prayers we offer now. Lord, we lift this prayer to you as well as the cries of our hearts, which are too deep for words. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace. Amen. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share signs of peace beginning with each other, beginning with those on the live stream.
Continue with their offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Take not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold with your free spirit. In a moment, we will continue with great thanksgiving. A few notes before we do. A reminder that we are receiving offerings in the box. If you didn't get a chance to leave an in-person offering before the service, it will remain on the altar uh, for a while after the service. You can also give online at our website, flcronan.org. Go there, click on the offerings tab, and you can give electronically. If you know it's about communion, we welcome all to our table in the name of Jesus Christ, believing that Christ is truly present in the body and blood through the bread and the wine. We have both wine and non-alcoholic grape juice. Wine is the red liquid and grape juice is the white. If you'd like to be served in your pews, please let the ushers know as they dismiss you. We continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated.
and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you and give you in his grace both now and in Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you and keep you in His grace both now and forever.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you in his grace, both now and forever. Amen. Please stand. And let us pray. God of abundance, with his bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is this joyful Easter tide, uh, 391. Now as Christ arisen, 
in peace, sir. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. 